Welcome to Between the Vines. My name is Kevin Martin. I'm here with Jennifer Phillips Russo and Megan Luke. And we're the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program and bringing you Between the Vines. We're here with you again this week. It's, it's nice to be back and hopefully in a groove for a little bit doing more frequent podcasts. It's been, it's been a bit of a long winter, but we did want to touch base with you as a reminder about some upcoming events. And for that, uh, the first part of this meeting, I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer. Thanks, Kevin. I guess we should also say that we're a partnership between Cornell University and Penn State University. That's what makes up the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program. And we are the ones who are putting on the 2023 Lake Erie Winter Growers Conference. We do it every year, or at least we had a little bit of a pause during the COVID pandemic. It is in person and it is located at the University of New York at Fredonia at the Williams Center. It is March 16th, that is next week for those of you who are listening to this on a relatively recent basis. It is March 16th, a Thursday, 2023, and we have a full day of, there's credits available, research. We have faculty coming in to give discussions. We have outside personnel, researchers coming in to talk about some research that they're doing in our area. So if anybody has any questions about that or where to register, you can do that at lergp.cce.cornell.edu. Kevin, what else would you like to say about the conference? I mean, if people are listening to this and they're not part of our program that get daily or weekly reminders that it's coming up. Well, I mean, for growers that sort of are planning on attending and have already registered just to get out of the way. Um, we do change that start time based on what type of speakers we have and how long that agenda is. So once or twice that's led to some confusion because it, it changes probably almost every year. We try to make it as sort of logical as possible in terms of how it fits into the grower's day. So, so for this year with the agenda we have, we're, we're gonna kick it off at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, the nice thing about this conference is it looks a lot like some of our historical conferences, which was not always possible around COVID in 2020. The idea is unlike a coffee pot meeting where you get the you know shiny happy faces of the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program, we have this opportunity to bring in guest speakers from you know other other areas and with a particular I think focus on Cornell this year, although that's not always the case, but. Uh, I think we probably did that somewhat consciously because there's been a lot of sort of new faculty that haven't really been able to make it out to an event like our conference. Uh, and they're not really necessarily new faculty anymore because they might've started in 2020 or 2021. So um, we are, I think sort of the overall theme of that, this conference is to try to get you to uh, get growers in the area an opportunity to see what they're what they've been working on what they will work on but but really what their specialty is uh, so you know a lot of these new positions are still in a stage of their career where they're looking for feedback in terms of what this industry needs to sort of push their research in a particular direction okay. so I think there's going to be some opportunity for uh, for it to be a little bit conversational and um, give you an opportunity as a grower to learn what resources are there, are there now and, and where research might be headed in the future. That's exactly how I proposed it to all the new faculty is this is your opportunity to meet face to face with growers and get their input on how to form your research around what our needs are. So please, we, we implore you to come and talk to them since it's you that we all schedule our research around. So this is your face time to talk with them. Right. And that's not to say we won't have sort of our, you know, the favorites of growers, at least based on the, some of the feedback we've gotten in the past. So we've got Brian Head, we've got Dr. Bates giving some updates on the stuff they've been working on, which, um, you know, is, is always extremely relevant to what's going on, you know, on the ground here in the Lake Erie region. So, so we can't leave them out and they fit in really quite nicely to providing some of the research that some of the growers might need immediately. And they're really busy doing that in the growing season sometimes. So you don't always hear it directly from them. So this is kind of your chance to do that. Exactly. And we also are going to be introducing not only the new faces of the faculty who we've may, maybe not met in person, but the Lake Erie Regional Grape, oh my goodness gracious. 
It's been a long week, everyone. The Lake Erie Regional Great Program has two new specialists joining our team. We have with us today, we're going to introduce the newest one, who is a Penn State University employee. She is, her name is Megan Luke. She started this week. This was her first week. Megan, feel free to go ahead and unmute yourself and talk. I'm just actually going to read what you sent for your bio is what we're going to do when we do a press release to welcome you. Megan is a native of Chautauqua County, staying power right here in New York, and she's been working in grapes since she was young. One of her earliest jobs was tying grapes in the early spring. Her childhood experience as agriculture eventually led her to the diverse cropping systems in Northern California, where she enrolled in Butte Community College and later in the California State University of Chico. While living in California, she co-worked in a range of perennial cropping systems and assisted in viticulture programs at Butte College, at Butte Community College, sorry, while managing both conventional and certified organic farmland. Her field experiences overlapped with earning multiple agricultural degrees in both institutions, acquiring over a dozen scholarships and graduating magna cum laude as a special recognition in her bachelor's of science in agriculture, option in crops, horticulture and land resource management degree. Megan has served CSU Chico as a College of Agricultural faculty member while also completing her master's of science degree in interdisciplinary studies, integrated pest management and agroecology. So during that time, she gained valuable experience with data analysis and grant writing, design and implementation of multi-year field experiments, and facilitation of hands-on agricultural experiences for students in the community. Megan's excited to be at home again and is looking forward to collaborating on agricultural needs identified by growers, producers, farmers, and university researchers in grapes and orchards. So welcome, Megan. Thank you. It's really great to be here. Um, still getting my bearings in my first week, uh, but I'm, again, very, very happy to be here, happy to be back home and really enjoying this wintry weather that we're experiencing in, in mid-March. <laughs> Megan will be there during our grower conference, and that is a great opportunity to introduce yourself. She's going to be trying to make those connections throughout this first season, so we're looking forward to all of our members coming up and greeting her in person. Yeah, looking forward to meeting everybody um, at the at the conference on Thursday. So feel free to come up and introduce yourself. Uh, love to start shaking hands and and learning names. That'd be wonderful. Thanks, Megan. The other specialist who is joining the Lake Erie Regional Great Program is Dr. Erman Vargas, who was the successful candidate for the New York State Grape IPM specialist position. He does not officially start our position with the team until June. However, he is flying in for this conference just to start making those connections. So please join us on March 16th at our Winter Growers Conference at the Williams Center at SUNY Fredonia starting at eight o'clock for a full day of research and introductions and just meeting some of the growers you may have not seen throughout the winter season. So we hope to see you there. So that brings us to the next thing and hopefully I don't get all choked up when I talk about it. But yes, we are adding people to our team to the Lake Erie Regional Great Program. And unfortunately, we're also having to say a see you later to one of our team members. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Kevin Martin. So yeah, so it sounds like this might be my last podcast. We do have some time next week. So maybe you'll get one more out of me. But that conference on Thursday will be my last day with the Lake Erie Regional Great Program. I'm not disappearing or going very far. I will be in Fredonia and am just transitioning towards the industry side of things, doing some grape growing and uh, being involved in the industry that way. Uh, so I look forward to seeing everybody in the region much the same way I do now, just uh, in a different way. I'll be at coffee pot meetings on the on the other side of the fence, so to speak. Uh, so. So I'm not I'm not going anywhere physically, but yes, this is this is it for me when it comes to the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a, quite a few years, so it's just time for me to try something else and see how it works out. But it has certainly been a pleasure with working with everybody over the years, and you know the current members of the team or member of the team, or however you want to characterize it, over the last year. Um, but but it's always been a great place to work, and uh, it's always been fun to you know talk to growers and try to you know change the way that people do things 
or, you know, learn from growers in terms of how they're doing things has always been sort of the two best parts of the job in terms of just being able to, you know, get paid and run around and do that kind of thing and, and learn and help other people learn. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun and um, yeah, I'll miss it as much as, as much as you guys will miss me. <laughs> so, um, so Thursday will be my last day. I had, you know, I had no desire to just sort of disappear uh, in, in terms of like a surprise. So, so I will, I'll be around next Thursday and, uh, and again, I'll be around in the area and in the industry for probably for perpetuity. So. Thank so, you. So what I'm hearing, Kevin, is that as I start to uh, work with the podcast is that you're going to be a regular guest speaker. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin, for everything that you've added to the team. Certainly going to be missed. However, I know that we'll see you at all the coffee pot meetings. I would like our members to know that we are not leaving Kevin's very important position unfilled. We have already started discussions about posting that job description to fill it as soon as possible. With that, I would also like to say your input is really important, not only to how we formulate our educational outreach. So every once in a while, I put out my little Please sign up for our advisory committee. So you are the people who help guide where our research goes. And as part of the grower stakeholders and industry stakeholders, this is what we do it for. So you being a part of that our advisory committee helps us formulate what we can do to help best, help best help you guys in your operations. So please consider joining that committee. And then you can guide what we hear at our, people call it grape school, our winter grower conference and also throughout the year, the type of education we bring to you. Thank you, Kevin, again. Of course, we're going to, I don't know how we're going to do it at the Grower Conference. Kevin and I have, have a, you guys know, if you listen to the podcast, a brother-sister type relationship. We like to banter back and forth. So you may see some tears. I'm going to try to keep it together, but it's been a lot of fun, Kevin. Thanks for all that you've done for us. Absolutely. It's been fun, for sure. Well, I can't even go anywhere from there. Like, oh, <laughs> uh, I did have a grower who wanted me to mention Westfield made and this sort of I hadn't heard a lot about it, but um, I hadn't heard about it. I mean, I knew they won the contest, but I didn't know right. there was something even I didn't even know there was anything going on about it. So what they developed and I think Cornell um, helped them develop this product. Uh, but what they developed is sort of an innovative packaging uh, for grape juice. And so it looks like that. Uh, and it says good and grapey, 100% Concord grape juice. Um, and so they're trying, so the purpose of that package is to get into schools. And the, the hard thing about being in schools is that most existing packaging lines are not set up for four ounces. There's very little demand in a retail space for four ounces, which is why you see those sort of unique packages in school lunches for juice that already do exist. I, I don't know what motivated them to drift from that, that already established packaging, but I'm assuming it's based on cost because it's that's a very difficult market to sort of reach in terms of what the return is. And so they have come up with this, this type of product that they think they can do really well with profitably in that sort of low price market. And then obviously they do get a little bit of a bump because if you've heard about like what's going on in New York state, they are looking for New York state products to be included in that lunch program. And the schools are reimbursed at a higher rate if they're able to do that. So that gives them a little bit of a competitive edge and then they don't necessarily have to, I think it's easier to probably scale this type of packaging line, which is why they're doing that. And Cornell's actually, I think doing or has the packaging equipment at Cornell um, in Geneva. I believe it's in Geneva. I don't think it's in Ithaca. This is the part yeah. that I was unaware of. I just right. know so, about it. So at least for a year, and I know this is not their first rodeo. They've done sort of startups over the last five years in terms of assisting new startup production, food production facilities that are looking to work with New York Ag. So they've done this before with other companies and typically they work with them for a while and then they sort of... Um, have plans to work out on their own. And so there's already some real estate that's been purchased in Westfield. And I think the, the potential is, is that that would be developed for 
doing the packaging in Westfield. Um, we should also okay. add, Kevin, thank you for bringing that up. We're very proud of Westfield Made for doing that. This particular, it was a Concord Innovation Contest that they entered and won first place on. But that contest was actually a result of the 2018 Concord Great Summit that was held right in Westfield. So they created this contest and the prize money and everything that goes along with it from that summit that we had here. So go Concord Industry. Moving and shaking. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly another market that was left untapped that, you know, in 2017, 2018, with really low prices, it would have been nice to have that outlet for extra supply. Uh, if they can do that and have some success with it when we don't actually have any extra supply, it will really help, I think, prepare us for that sort of next business cycle. So that's going to take some investment, sort of direct investment on the part of grape growers, because that's how cooperatives work. So hopefully, um, you know, we obviously, you know, I think as an industry appreciate that, that risk that they're taking and look forward to see like what those results look like. Thank you. Did you have anything else to add? I did not, no. I just no. wanna give a shout out for if you are needing, this is for New York State, if you are needing your pesticide applicator license or just looking for some additional credits. I know some people license may be expiring this year. We do have the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation is holding a course at Clarel on March 23rd. That course is a $20 fee. It is worth credits and it is being taught by the DEC. It's sort of, sort of a preparatory course for your pesticide applicator license. And then at the course, we will have a notary present and you bring a check that will be made out to the New York State DC and return the next week to take the exam. So if you or anyone in your operation needs that pesticide applicator license, you can register for that on our website, or you can also, I believe, register for it on the DEC, at least just the exam part. And this, I should state that this is for anybody across commodities who are looking for a New York State pesticide applicator license. So um, it's not just the grape world. If you have friends and other commodities, please tell them, let them know that they're able to come up and take this exam. That's all I have. After Kevin talks about leaving, I just get all, <laughs> so, and welcome Megan, we're excited. I don't mean to like overshadow your joining us with Kevin's leaving. So we're excited to be working with you all year. Yeah, I know. I understand. It's going to be tough shoes to fill. So <laughs> hopefully uh, I can I can step up and uh, provide some great contact or great content for our listeners and our viewers. I have no doubt. I have no doubt as well. Thanks for joining us. Kevin, do you want to sign off for possibly maybe the last time? I was going to say, I'm not going to say see you next week. And that's usually my sign off. So I was I was going to let you say that. But, um, you know, continue <laughs> contacting these guys with great questions and helping out, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, sometimes there's good content out there that, that Jen or maybe Megan doesn't know is good content because they don't know you need to know it. And, uh, and there is no bad question. And those questions are what make this podcast a whole lot better. So please keep those coming. And uh, especially if you're in the region, I'm sure you know how to reach out to these guys and yeah, that's it. Thanks. That's a great point. I should also mention that in Kevin's absence and before we fill his position, we have had business management specialists throughout the Cornell extension process offer their assistance. So if you do have questions, I have people to go to to ask. And I always have Kevin on my phone anyways. So please feel free. Sorry, Kevin, I won't make you work and not get paid for it. Please feel free to contact us with whatever you have and we'll try to find those answers for you. Yeah, especially if you have like... Um questions about New York policy or crop insurance or some of the non-grape things that I've talked about over the years, is particularly on the New York side. Uh, Caitlin Wally Stoll is based out of Chautauqua County. She does a great job with all of that stuff. Uh, she works closely with Rich on workforce development. So any of that stuff, not that I want to load her up with more stuff to do because she's got plenty, but she is a great resource for all of, all of that stuff. If you are a member of Extension in Chautauqua County, you've probably joined her program. So you, you are receiving uh, communication from her already and that, and that team. Uh, so I would just pursue that further if 
this position happens to be, you know, vacant for the growing season and you have sort of a pressing matter that you want addressed that is in that lane, in that lane. Perfect. She is the one who has reached out and offered her services as well. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I just guessed, I guess. But yeah, she's such yeah, a good she's always been there for ag, so I'm not surprised. Yeah, thank you all, you know, growers out there for, for working with me over the last, I think, 15 years. I didn't do the math, but it's something like that. And it, it's been great, and uh, I will see you around. Kevin, best of luck with everything. Thank you, Jen. Yeah.